Hello, I'm Will Bridges from your team here at Tradehouse Funds, and we have an exciting show for you today. I'm going to go through the economic calendar for the rest of this year, and I'm going to talk about you know, some of the moves I think could be some of the bigger to not only finish the year, but also kind of progress through Q1. If you are looking for some barn burners of trades, then you came to the right place. Um, so we're going to show the economic calendar here first. And then once I get done with the economic calendar, I'm going to show you guys some charts, a little bit of analysis. You know, we'll talk a, a little opportunity. If you guys like what we do on this channel, if you like what we do at Tradehouse Funds with prop trading, then by all means, smash the like button, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the trade ideas in the comments as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up my economic calendar and I'll pull that up. Uh, I might as well cover the risk disclaimer while we're at it. There is no such thing as a guaranteed trade or investment. You have to risk it to get the biscuit. I'm going to show you guys some of my trades. I haven't won all of them. Obviously, I lose trades too, and you should expect that you might lose some and plan for that possibility as well. Uh, but I'm, I'll show you guys some of my trade history, how things have been going in my challenge account and how, you know, well, really, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of taking my time and you guys will understand there's plenty of volatility. There's no reason for me to marry any trades right now. If we look at this, okay, and, you know, especially I just got married earlier this year, by the way, so definitely not trying to marry a trade. It's already enough to be married to a woman. No reason to marry an instrument of trading. Uh, sounds very odd when I put it that way. So we're going to skip that. We're going to pretend that didn't happen. German IFO business climate. Okay, so this might have been, you know, what opened the floodgates on the DAX. The DAX has been on a, you know, all-time high at 17,000 and taking a little bit of a breather. We could see you know, a little bit more of a breather here for a few days, and that might be an opportunity for the Bears to finally start pulling their pants back up on this one because, you know, it's been tough for the shorts. Okay, it's been very tough for the shorts. Uh, you know, they got to tighten their belts. I think um, in Germany, if oil continues to rise like it is. And, you know, Australia, they're, you know, kind of showing a lot of strength right now. Um, and I think rightfully so, it does seem like they're going to be able to hold rates kind of as long as they want right now. Uh, Japan, they're talking about changing a policy to be more hawkish and to raise rates for the first time in seven years. So I'm going to be pretty bullish there. Uh, Canada, higher inflation than expected. I think means they can hold rates longer than they expected. So I think some strength in the CAD there. Uh, U.S., nothing exciting otherwise, news-wise news, news wise in my mind on Tuesday, from a trading perspective at least. Uh, China did not lower rates further, so they are still in stimulation mode there. Deflating, I think another reason why gold is strong. Um, and as long as they continue to you know stimulate, they might also keep things like oil prices higher than where they would be otherwise. Uh, GBP CPIs, okay, inflation in the UK is less than they anticipated, which to me means that they can't hold rates as long. I'm expecting weakness there. And that might be a fun one to play against something like the Japanese yen or the Canadian dollar, a little strong versus weak. As far as the news is playing out, uh, for this week, I think that's kind of the play. And I'll show the chart, and I think you'll see, you'll probably agree once we get there. But obviously, it's totally up to you. Uh, let's keep on moving here. Uh, consumer confidence, pretty high in USA. Doesn't seem like they're raising rates or lowering rates tomorrow. Home sales have improved as well. So another reason why they won't lower rates. Uh, if you come down here to final GDP, that's not as exciting as preliminary GDP. This is kind of a foregone conclusion. So not big news in my mind. I think this week kind of closes out a little quiet. You know, manufacturing's been terrible here. Inflation's been in this three and a half range. The target's 2%. So they're still holding, you know, Canadian GDP positive, better than it was. So that's good news for the central bank and the strength of the Canadian dollar, if that's what they want, at least. Uh, durable goods orders are still solid here in USA. So nothing to be scared about, you know, as far as the US dollar. And, you know, if we continue to have all the geopolitical risk that's going on in not just the Middle East, but also in Europe, uh, and, you know, a lot, anything can happen. Uh, we've had the Navy allegedly deployed in the Suez Canal. So there could be big movement on things like oil. I think, you know, like I mentioned, we started off the week with the business climate not as good as anticipated in Germany. So we could be at a pretty impressive high on things like this Euro JPY. And when you look at this, you know, we kind of are. We're knocking on the door of some of the highest prices we've seen since, you know, the last time they came a lot lower. <laughs> And that's really the important part that I want to pay attention to as a trader. And I'm going to pull this uh, smart ABCD tool out. 
And let's make sure that I've actually got the uh, the whole thing on. We're gonna you want to make sure you guys see the whole screen. We're at these high prices. You guys see this? I'm glad I fixed that. And that would have been a headache for you guys. Um, but this is one of my favorites, I think. And this is really where we just got to our extension. This is a golden ratio, you know, burn up, you know, from the 0.618 down here. And we've got a really, really nice level. We just hit, okay? And it extends many years back. People cared about it in the late 90s. They cared about it in the late 2010s. And, you know, they might care about it now in 2023. And that's the part that I want to pay the most attention to. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one. We'll make it blue. You know, we'll get a little dash in here so you can see through it. I'll come down to the lower time frame. But I've already decided that this is a place where I'm interested in potentially going short. And you look at it now, it looks very ideal. It looks juicy to me. And, you know, really the next big testing ground for it could be considerably lower. I mean, we're talking considerably lower. I mean, hundreds of pips under here is where this previous level of resistance that could become future support exists. And that's all the way at 149. That's almost a thousand pips away, people. I think this can happen fast on something like the Euro yen. Uh, there's a similar looking opportunity on the pound yen. And you can also go ahead and take a look at the dollar yen, but it's not going to fall as quickly. And I don't think as fast because I think we are seeing a little more neutrality from the US dollar. Uh, but otherwise, those are my favorites. The Swiss. Uh, Frank is also looking very strong, so maybe something like the pound Swiss might be an exciting one. The Euro Swiss, Swiss could also be exciting uh, to close out this year and to start the beginning of next year. And, you know, obviously you want to enter as a seller if, if you do expect the chart to come down. Um, and that's really just kind of a by virtue of, you know, the way the symbol is built. You know, I'm, I'm really betting on the Swiss Frank. So that's really uh, the thing to understand here. And the reason I'm betting on the Swiss Frank is because this is the direction it's gone for all of this time. This is a downtrend. Okay. And down doesn't mean it has to come up. That's you know, not how things work. There's no reason for me to believe that. I am looking at deflation in Switzerland. This is another reason why gold can run up higher um, and why we're on that topic. Okay. I think the Euro Swiss is another good one to look at for this topic. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at gold. And this is Long-term outlook for gold. We did come down to this 1.5, another golden ratio. So a good big big testing ground could be around 2,200, a little bit higher than our, well, our new all-time high that just formed earlier in this month, okay? So for us to see all-time highs in the end of this month even, or in January, February, March, April, May, June, and beyond, all of it is in play. Uh, very exciting time to trade precious, precious metals. And I think that silver is another one to look at. Um, XAG USD here. Silver could be extremely exciting. Uh, same kind of deal here. This is the downstroke that had been happening for a couple of years. We are, don't be fooled, on an uptrend. Okay, this is the uptrend. Okay, if I didn't have that drawn there, you can see that now. And these downward facing lines are kind of counter trends. Okay, so we've already hit our golden ratio below. Wouldn't be crazy for us to break out and hit 31, especially if we are you know, looking at as much geopolitical risk as, the, as there is going on right now. We are looking at dip in the U.S. 10-year Treasury bond. And, you know, a lot of people like to shelter in precious metals. That's kind of why they exist to begin with. Uh, so really a lot on our plate. There's a ton of opportunity in the world right now. And, you know, it's really, uh, <laughs> it's really hard to... Hard to even know where you want to look first. The Aussie is another one I've been very bullish on. I, I was a little bit you know, less enthusiastic about the Aussie New Zealand. This has been one of my favorites for a long time. And I think this one might break out for the first time in you know 10 years. I've already got this drawn here. Okay, This has been going sideways since I learned how to you know use the Fibonacci tool for the first time. <laughs> this one's been sideways for a decade. Okay, So um, I'm really just calling for consolidation to get 250 pips here. And that's something I think can happen in January, maybe sooner, especially if we see a commodities bull run. I think that's very big for places like Australia. Obviously it is, you know, kind of as big for New Zealand. They're more, you know, they're going to be a little more dependent on things like travel than I think Australia might be. And, you know, that being the case, uh, we did get a fresh higher high over here uh, from, you know, that's it's many years in the making. OK, so we are getting higher lows as well. Higher highs. We get this channel moving upwards uh, that we're looking at in the Aussie New Zealand. So I'm very excited about the Australian dollar as well. Uh, but, you know, there's really just one other that everybody likes to look at this Euro USD. I did mention I'm looking at a little bit of 
you know, expected weakness in the euro. Or at least relative to the USD, maybe. And it does seem like we could go a little bit sideways. But just to show you guys, you know, the euro has been moving up the last few days. But that is neither here nor there in the long term of things. Uh, and this is really just about looking for a responsible place, in my opinion, to find that I could go short. Uh, because I am going to be bull dollar versus the euro. Uh, because that's kind of been the trend for the last... I don't know, 15 years. So there's no reason why I shouldn't capitalize on this higher price. And you know, maybe this thing pushes sideways. I'm not saying we break out up or down right now. But what I am saying is that it does make sense that we could push sideways here. And this doesn't do anything overly noteworthy, exciting. I'm showing the Euro USD uh, primarily because this is the most heavily traded instrument on the planet. And uh, I think people just want to know, you know what could happen with this one. But if the pound does come down, similarly, to the way uh, this is the formation here is not much different on the pound USD. So the missed target that could happen in this sideways range, let's just say if we do go sideways, could be something like this. OK, so that's all the way down at parity. That's a thousand pips away. OK, so this is a huge call. And if it goes higher, I'm still going to expect parity later um, until something changes. I'm not going to change my mind. Um, and really, there's no reason for me to change my mind. We still have this higher high above here than where we are right now. So we're on the way down still. Okay, this is more or less the sell zone, according to this box, for the last year and a half or longer. So um, really a ton going on in the world. Lots of opportunity. We're at a lot of extreme prices right now, which means big opportunity for traders. If you haven't been paying attention, there's a lot out there right now. Um, and really, uh, it should be an exciting finish to this year. Uh, Q4 is usually where, well, some traders might make all of their profits for the year. And, you know, I'm, I'm this year in my retirement account, even I might even be one of those people. Um, I think I might get more in you know, the last two months than I got the whole rest of the year because I was very conservative this year, uh, especially with my retirement stuff. Um, but either way, I'm very excited about uh, the end of this year. Beginning of next year, if you are looking to take a trading challenge, then by all means, check out our website, tradehousefunds.com. If you liked this video, then, you know, smash that like button. Just do it for me one time. I'll be back next week uh, on Friday uh, with more updates to close out the year and, you know, give you guys a little check in on how things are going. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching the whole time and you have a wonderful rest of your holiday season. We'll see you next Friday.